guys welcome back to the Great Game Challenge channel. Today I just wanted to kind of hop on here um, and talk about what I think is going to happen during the 2022 offseason. My personal opinions on things and what's going on on the league. Okay, anyways, yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and get right into the video. We're not going to waste any time. I'm going to go to my top 10. Um, first, I'm going to talk about who I think will re-sign with their respective team. All right. First, I think that Zach Levine will re-sign with the Chicago Bulls. Kyra, um, Kyrie Irving will resign with the Nets. I can't really see him going to the Lakers for like Russell Westbrook or anything. Um, and I have Re Russell Westbrook resigning with Lakers. Phil Jackson said he wanted to keep him. I think that's exactly what they're going to do. Um, Zach Levine, I, I just really can't see him leaving the Bulls. Um, Bradley Beal resigns with the Wizards. Miles Bridges resigns with the Hornets. Bobby Portis resigns with the Bucks. Adonis Haslam resigns with the Heat. Otto Porter Jr. resigns with the Warriors. And a big one right here the Utah Jazz do not trade Rudy Gobert. They, they will not trade Rudy Gobert. That's my take right here. Um, will they trade Donovan Mitchell? You'll find out later in the video. What, what, what I think, that is. All right, anyway, starting at number 10, I got, I got, um, JaVale McGee signing with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, for, all right, so the Oklahoma City Thunder are in need of a center right now. Um, they have lots, they have lots of, they have a future, all, they have a future all-star potential player, Shakers Alexander. They got another future all-star, Josh Giddy. They got Lugenzis Dort, who was just, he was just a dog. He's amazing. Um, but something that they've been needing is a good center. Right now, their starting center is Derek Favors. So if they were able, able to get like a, a person like JaVale McGee to get those boards, get those putbacks, that would be an amazing move for the Oklahoma City Thunder. And that would and it doesn't really fit their rebuild, but it's just for now. Unless, because, you know, we all, tonight is the NBA draft. So if they do Chet Holgren, then this could put their, their potential lineup could be Shea, Giddy, Dort, Chet, JaVale. If this happens. All right. That's number one. Okay. Number two, PJ Tucker with the signs with the 76ers. PJ Tucker has made it very clear he is not accepting his player option with the Miami with the Miami Heat. He's leaving, right? So my so my take is he signs with the 76ers because he's shown interest in the 76ers. The 76ers have shown interest in him. And him, and especially with um with all the with so the corner three for the 76 is not really a good hot spot for them. Like they don't really have too many guys that can hit that. If they sign PJ Tucker, this will be an amazing deal, and it's not even going to be that expensive. Like I mean, for an NBA team, it's not going to be that expensive. Like it's I I, I, I couldn't afford them. Um, like it it costs maybe seven mil for one year of PJ Tucker. That's really all you need to sign PJ Tucker. To a seven million dollar contract, a one year seven million dollar contract. See what he can do, and maybe he can become a key piece to your team. We don't know. Number eight, John Wall signs with the Clippers. Um, the Rockets paid off the rest of John Wall's contract. He's a free agent this year. Um, and I've heard some talk that he will resign with the Rockets. I don't know why he would. He want he wanted out. He got out. Maybe he just wants money for not playing. Um, yeah, but I think he can sign with the Clippers. Um, I've heard rumors about Clippers. I haven't really heard rumors about anywhere else. Um, I heard something about the Hornets, like one thing, but I don't really believe that's going to happen. Um, I see John Wall signing with the Clippers. Um, they, they, they need a point guard. I'm going to be honest here. They need a point guard. Um, they don't really have one. Their starter right now is Reggie Jackson, and he play, he's better. He's a better player off the um, off the bench, like as the sixth man role, as a seventh man, something like that. So they need, like, another starting center that – I mean, sorry, another starting point guard. Um and John Wall, I feel like it's just that guy. That would make what make a big three. John Wall, Kawhi, and Paul George. If Kawhi decides to play this year, or if he just if he's feeling better, um, injury wise. Um, but anyway, still, like that means that a fully healthy Clippers lineup would look like John Wall, Luke Kennard, Kawhi Leonard, or maybe Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, somewhere around there, and then either Evika Zubac. That's who I think, Evica, Evica, whatever his name is, Zubac. That's a healthy Clippers lineup. That is honestly, maybe, that is definitely a playoff team. Could possibly be a championship team. I think that's what's going to happen. Next, we have a little double with me right here. Jalen Smith and Lonnie Walker the fourth. Lonnie Walker the fourth and uh, Jalen Smith signed with the Houston Rockets. I see this be happening because I believe Jalen Smith is like 22. Lonnie Walker is like 23. Um, and this they, they would just go good with the Rockets. The Rockets may draft Pablo tonight, Pablo Benchero, or he may they may draft Jabari Smith, Chet Holgren. 
one of those three guys is going to be a part of the Houston Rockets roster tonight. So, to go along with them, Jalen Smith would be a nice defensive guy. Um, he would just be that dude, man. He he knows how to play defense, knows how to put pressure on the player, and and he has and he has a nice wingspan, which, like I was saying, he knows how to pressure a shot. He's young. He has that long wingspan that he can use, um, and honestly. I think that he would be the Rockets. He would be a great fit for the Rockets, especially for their rebuild that's going on right now. He would be a great fit for them. Lonnie Walker, he's that dude. He can play the shooting guard. He can play the small forward. He can play the power forward position. He can you can you can put him pretty much in any position almost, and he would be able to play it. He if, if he needs that three ball, don't worry. He, Lonnie Walker can be athletic when you need him to be. He can shoot that three ball when you need him to be. When you need him to shoot it. Honestly, I think this would be a great pickup for the Houston Rockets, um, and I think that, and I think that they would both be willing to sign there because it could really help boost their career in the future. Number six, um, I have Dennis Schroeder signing with the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, all talk, really. Um, in my opinion, James Harden's leaving. You'll figure out where he's going and where I think he's going in the in late in the video. Um, but Dennis Schroeder uh, signing with the Philadelphia 76ers. I just see that happening. I don't know why. Um, really, but it also when you think about it, it makes sense. His contract is kind of small. Um, they can afford Dennis Schroeder with James Harden. In my opinion, if he does leave, they do need a, another guard and a lineup of Dennis Schroeder, Tyrese Maxey, uh, Joel Embiid, Tobias Harris, and Matisse Thybul. That's dangerous right there. Um, he's pretty much he's not James. He's not James Harden. He he's not he's not James Harden, but he's he he can kind of do it. He can shoot the ball when you need him to. He can dribble the ball, and for a point guard, yes, he can pass. He can pass the ball, and um, with him being a free agent and not being on the Rockets anymore, I just I think he's gonna sign with the Philadelphia 76ers, and I think that um, he it may sign to like a one or two year deal, maybe like each year being worth around five to seven million dollars. That's my prediction. Halfway point number five, Carmelo Anthony signs with the. New so I'm about to say the Knicks, the Brooklyn Nets right here. Now, these Nets fans, they may be happy because I'm saying this. Here's my reason why. One, cheap contract. The Nets can afford it. Two, they're probably going to get rid of Blake Griffin. They're probably going to get rid of Bruce Brown. Maybe not, but they're definitely probably going to get rid of Blake Griffin. And Car Carmelo Anthony does not want to be on the Lakers anymore. I wouldn't want to be on the Lakers either. One, I just don't like the Lakers. But anyways, two, the Lakers, their little super team experiment did not work. So, I think Carmelo Anthony signs with a new team, gets a new future, and honestly, the Nets. A, tr a signing that, si that gets Carmelo to the Nets, imagine how dangerous he's going to be off the bench. Like, with the Nets roster. Think about that. Like, look, what? Your starting lineup, you already got Kyrie. You already got KD. You got, what? You got Seth Curry and Andre Drummond. You got Bruce Brown or Joe Harris, whoever you have starting, right? You have all of those players, right? And then off the bench, off the bench you have what? Um, then off the bench you're gonna have Carmelo Anthony to sub in for KD. A top seventy-five player subbing in for KD. I just that's that's amazing. And knowing that his contract is only worth what like one mil, the Nets could probably pay him like what three mil, and he'd still be on the team. And he, and he don't need like a five, six years super max contract like Giannis Scott or whatever. Or what Luca has or something like that. You, you don't got to pay him all that. Just give him one year. And then if he retires, he retires. If he doesn't, you can try to resign him. I think that if the, honestly, I think if the Nets sign Carmelo Anthony, then they will be a playoff. Like not play in. They'll, they'll at least be the six seed. I got to be in, what, three to six. And then if there's with other signings, they could possibly be the one seed. Even, even if, even after being swept. By the uh, Boston Celtics. At number four, we got Colin Sexton signing with the Detroit Pistons. Now, listen to this. The Cleveland Cavaliers, It's let's be real here. They're done with Colin Sexton. They're done with him. They, they don't want any part with him anymore. Um, Darius Garland is their guy now. They thought Colin Sexton was that guy, the, the, the future, the piece, of their, the piece of their offense. But he got injured. Darius Garland became an all-star. Why need Colin Sexton anymore, right? So you might as well... Um, they might as well just not even sign him again. So Colin Sexton signs with the Detroit Pistons. I see this happening because one, he's young. That goes with the Pistons rebuild strategy. Two, this could possibly make the Pistons a play-in team. I'm not even joking. Possibly, I don't know about playoff, 
but definitely a playing team if they sign Colin Sexton. I've seen Colin Sexton has interest in going into Detroit. Detroit has interest in Colin Sexton. This is it's just a move that probably gonna get done. Um, and with the lineup of Cade, um, Colin Sexton replacing Killian Hayes probably. Then you get Sadiq Bay, Jeremiah Grant, and um, and Isaiah Stewart. That team is going to the play-in tournament. Like it's not even it's not even a debate. That team is a play-in tournament team, possibly maybe even a second round after like play playoff team. Like this team, this the Pistons are going to be somewhere in the next five years. Like there's a couple teams like what the Rockets. That could just be my biased Rockets self, but because I'm a Rockets fan. But I actually like non-biased. I see the Rockets, the Mavericks, the Pistons, the Thunder, and possibly I don't really know. Possibly the Magic, depending on who they pick tonight. Being, like, actual championship contenders in the next five years. Um, but yes. But just getting Colin Sexton would maybe even just shorten that time to three years, depending on the time. But yeah, Colin Sexton would be a great addition to the Detroit Pistons. He would help them out heavily. And honestly, I just think that Colin Sexton, Colin Sexton is a good player. He may, I don't, he may be like Clay. He may not be the same Colin Sexton he was before, but he can still play ball. And if, that's, and if you can play ball, that's really all that matters. Number three, we got a trade. The first and last, the only trade of the entire video. The rest of them are signings um, from free agents. <clears throat> now, let's be clear. I have lots of opinions on what's going to happen during the offseason, right? I just did what I think, like the top ten biggest ones. Anyways... <clears throat> the Jazz are going to trade Donovan Mitchell. It is time, guys. Yep, you guys heard it. You guys heard it. Me here, right here. The Jazz trade Donovan Mitchell to what team, though? The New York Knicks. I said it, and it's going to happen tonight on draft night. I'm calling it right now. Jazz trade Donovan Mitchell to the Knicks for Julius Randle, Emmanuel Quickly, Cam Reddish, and the 11th pick in the 2022 draft. Donovan Mitchell, an All Star, right? You get the, the, the Knicks get Donovan Mitchell. That improves their roster like a lot. Um, the Knicks get, and then also the Knicks get Julius Randle, Emmanuel Quickly, Cam Reddish, two young guys, and one former All Star. And you get the eleventh pick in the twenty twenty two draft, who is probably going to be a good player. Um, that's a top fourteen pick, which is a lottery pick, like one of like the top fourteen lottery picks. So yeah, um, I see this trade happening, and it's gonna happen tonight. The Knicks on the for the eleventh pick, the Knicks will um, announce they will announce the trade that Donovan Mitchell is being is Donovan Mitchell headed to the Knicks, and for Julius for, for and then the Jazz will be receiving the pick. They'll also be receiving Julius Randle, Emmanuel Quickly, and Cam Reddish. That's my that's my prediction. Um, if, and number two, we got DeAndre Ayton, his decision. I said he wasn't re-signing with the Suns. He's, he's going to be signing with the Charlotte Hornets. Hornets could use a center badly. Let's, let's think about it. Look, they have LaMelo Ball, Terry Rozier. They have Miles Bridges, good Gordon Hayward. That that entire team is just amazing, right? But their center is P.J. Washington, who, no disrespect, P.J. Washington's a, he's a dog, he's a stud. He, he's a great player, right? But I see him more as a, as a backup. I feel like... He's not at that starter potential yet. He's not really there to um, be able to carry them to the playoffs um, as like an eight seed or a seven seed. Honestly, DeAndre Ayton, the Sun not signing him. DeAndre Ayton with the Hornets, that would be an amazing trade blockbuster kind of thing, right? I think that DeAndre Ayton signing with the Hornets, that's a good home for him. I think that the Hornets will sign DeAndre Ayton. Um... And this will make them an automatic playoff team, in my opinion. Maybe even just a play-in team. It doesn't. But, yeah. I think DeAndre Ayton definitely signing with the Hornets makes sense to me. Um, the cap space makes sense. They have the money to pay him. And they can sign him for, like, a three-year. They can sign him for, like, a three-year deal. I'm not, like, not, you have to do a surprise. You get to do a three-year deal. Or just a two. Or even, maybe even one. Just see how he works out with the team. Um, Yeah, but with LaMelo Ball, um, he needs more help. He needs more help. He has Terry Rozier and Gordon Hayward and... Um, Miles Bridges, he needs more than just Miles Bridges, really. Gordon Hayward's kind of injury prone. Terry Rozier, he can shoot the ball, but he needs another he needs another pick and roll partner in case Miles Bridges is out. And PJ Washington's not going to be that. James Book, that's not going to be that. But DeAndre Ayton will be that. He's going to be the guy. And then my number one features the beard. 
the former MVP, James Harden. Now, out of all of these, I thought about this one the most because I had a couple destinations in mind for this dude. At first, I thought I was like, the Mavericks. I could see him going to the Mavericks. And then I kind of, this was like before the playoffs though. I mean, not before the playoffs, like, it was like after they got eliminated. And I was like, okay, he's not staying in Philadelphia. He's probably going to go to the Mavericks. I can see him going there. Um, but now the more that I think about it, the more it doesn't make sense. They already got Jalen Brunson. They, they went to the conference finals, almost made the finals. So why, why, why mess that up? And then, you, and then like a couple of days ago, they just, what, traded for Christian Wood. So, why would you do that, right? Like, that doesn't make any sense. And then I was like, okay, he's probably going to go to the Jazz. Because in my mind, I already, I, the, the, the Jazz down in the middle, I was like, he's getting traded. But then, again, I thought about it some more, and I was like, that I don't know if they're going to have the cap room for that. They may not have the money to pay him, the, the money that he wants. Um, and, I, and he's going to want to go to, like, a winning team. So then I went to the Hornets, right? Even though they're not really a winning team, I was like, he could make a winning team. But then I was like, okay, yeah, but he could go to the Hornets. But then again, I just can't see that happening. Like, why? Like, honestly, he, I feel like he, would, he wouldn't really want to sign with Charlotte. I thought about it more, and then I came with the team that I personally think he's going to sign with, and that is the Atlanta Hawks. <laughs> If we look, if we if we look at the Atlanta Hawks starting lineup, it includes Trey Young, Kevin Huerter, um, DeAndre Hunter, John Collins, and Clint Capella. Now, signing with the Hawks means he gets to reunite with Clint Capella, who he has chemistry with. He has Trey Young, and we show and it showed that he can play with a James Harden can play. When he's not the number one option. He did it with Philadelphia, right? But I feel like with Atlanta, he's going to have more opportunities to score anyways. He has Trey Young. If Trey Young's out, you got James Harden. See what I mean? They have the money to pay him. And then again, I'm not saying sign him to a Luka Doncic, Giannis Antetokounmpo, six-year Supermax contract. Sign him for like, what, two to four years. See how he plays. And then make your judgments off of that. But James Harden going to the Hawks makes the most sense to me. Um, and then if they, he replaces Kevin Wetter, and then that bench adds Kevin Wetter, that, that's scary. Then you get Bogdan Bogdanovich on there too. Then that I think that turns the Hawks into an automatic playoff team, not a play-in, automatic playoff team. And I think that makes the most sense to me. James Harden signing with the Hawks. That means that you got Trey Young, James Harden, DeAndre Hunter, John Collins, and Clint Capella. Clint Capella and James Harden got that pick and roll chemistry. Trey Young and John Collins have that pick and roll chemistry. They'll learn to work together. Then eventually, Trey Young and James Harden will have chemistry. James Harden and John Collins will have chemistry. And James Harden will have chemistry with every single person on the Hawks team. James Harden going to the Hawks. You heard it here first. Um, anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. If you haven't mentioned the subscribe button and ring that bell so you can post notifications when we post a new video. We will see you guys next time. Have a nice day. Bye.